Alrighty, so the first step for installing the transmission adapter on the V2203 is going to be to prep our mating surface. So that requires two main things. Number one is oil pan. So the big cast uh, carrier oil pan actually protrudes back past this part of the, the block. So you can kind of see where the factory transmission bell housing adapter, flywheel housing adapter actually married. So you can see there was a gap at the bottom. So they didn't have that issue, but since this plate is going to go all the way down here, you might have issues with the oil pan. Either one, even this Kubota oil pan can stick out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen my hardware so that this pan can slide down so it's definitely past this block face. And then later, if I need to, I can always take a dead blow hammer and curl this lip over so it's not touching. And the other thing we have to do is clean the block. So again, as you can see, you can see the outline of where that flywheel housing adapter bolted. Everywhere it wasn't touching, you're going to have rust, especially up here. You can actually feel this with your finger. So there's a lip and we want all this to be clean and flat because just the smallest bit of debris can throw our alignment of our transmission out by a couple thousandths. And of course you want to make sure your freeze plugs are below flush so that when the adapter plate sits, it is flat, it's straight all the way across, it's all touching the block, it's not being held up off the block. So the way this engine works is kind of neat because instead of having two dowel pins, which we could use, there's a dowel pin here, there's a dowel pin hole here. Um, all of these that I've seen only use this one dowel pin. And then the other quote unquote dowel pin is this guy here, which is centered around your rear crank seal. So it has these little faces kind of by each bolt and that's where it actually touches. You can see it's shiny there. So you want to make sure those are cleaned off because that is how I'm locating this transmission adapter. Uh, this lip actually locates. If you want to think about it, that actually centers it to the crankshaft and then we set our rotation with this dowel pin. This kind of locks it to the rotation. So we know we're dead center because this guy is concentric with the crankshaft already. So that part of this engine is nice. It makes it really easy to make transmission adapters in that regard. So I'm going to take a, uh, I forget what they call this thing, but it's got these green bristles. Um, I think it's a ro roto lock disc. Um, it's made by 3M. These are made out of oil soluble material. So if it does happen to get into the engine, it just dissolves into the oil. So that part's nice, but I'm going to take that. I'm going to clean all this up. Then we can get our adapter plate put on. Now I'm going to come in with my straight edge and just make sure I don't have anything really sticking and protruding up, blocking us from putting our plate on. Make sure this lip of the oil pan is below. If it's not, just take a, make sure it's tightened up. Make sure you got enough bolts in there to tighten it up and just kind of roll that formed lip down. You don't have to overdo it because you don't want to distort your sealing surface a lot. So now I'm just going to blow it off. Take some brake parts cleaner. Wipe it off. If you want to, a really good trick to prevent any leaks from the back end since the adapter plate is flat and is basically a sealing surface you can fill these freeze plug gaps with RTV. You just don't want to overdo it to the point that it sticks up and gets on your blocks, your, on your mating surface to your block. Make sure your dowel pin's really nice and clean, and then make sure these contact points on the rear main seal are nice and clean. 
take the adapter plate, make sure the back side of it is nice and clean. And first we'll start it on the center portion and then the dowel sits just a little bit lower so we can start that second. Just like that. So our next step is we have 11 bolts to secure this to the block. We're going to put our blue Loctite on and then we will torque these to spec. And again, the installation instructions with all your torque specs is available in PDF on my website on the product page. So taking my 14 millimeter socket, I'm going to put this on the lowest torque setting. I'm just going to zip these down until they are basically finger tight. Now I'll take my torque wrench, I'll go around and I'll torque these in an alternator, alternating pattern and I'll go around and do them at least twice. It's also usually a good idea to use something for a visual aid, like a marker, show which fasteners have been torqued. The next step, now if you're going to be putting your transmission on right away, you'd take the supplied 10 millimeter dowel pins and you'd put those in the adapter plate. I'm not installing the transmission just yet, so I'm going to take our dust shield slash bell housing spacer, starter locator, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you put that on here first and it doesn't have to be lined up but you can't get this on or off once the flywheel's on so we just got to make sure it's sitting on the block before we install the uh, flywheel. For the flywheel you're going to have a crankshaft adapter so this is actually an adapter spacer it gets sandwiched between the flywheel and the crankshaft like many OEM heavy duty engines use. So we have one offset hole. So you're going to have to rotate this guy around until you find where, where it uh, lines up. And then the same thing with the flywheel, you'll have to figure out where it lines up. So again, make sure your crankshaft is clean Make sure your adapter's clean so that you're not trapping anything in between. Same thing with the back side of your flywheel. Make sure there's no burrs or debris on there. And that is one of the really nice aspects of having this easily removable crankshaft adapter. As you can run this over just by itself, you can throw this in your oven to heat it up if you, if you really need to. Um, I didn't have any problems at all pressing in the throw out bearing on my hydraulic press but if you're just using like a dead blow hammer and a piece of wood you can actually set this in the oven heat it up it'll expand that hole so then you can slide this and uh, the throw out, the pilot bearing will pretty much drop right in the bearing gets pressed in so it's flush towards the transmission side or this outside or back side of the crankshaft adapter. Don't press it all the way in until it bottoms out. Leave it hanging back towards this back end. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna position the pilot bearing on a fresh surface on your transmission's uh, input shaft. Because these transmissions, as we all know, have hundreds of thousands of miles on them at this point. The bearings have worn down that input shaft where they rode from the factory but they actually had more usable area, more surface area. So I've designed this to move that pilot bearing back so that we can use a fresh surface so we have a nice tight fit of the input shaft into the pilot bearing. Now on this phase, I definitely recommend doing a dry installation just to make sure everything's gonna fit correctly because there are two different liquids that we have to apply to these fasteners. So these are ARP flywheel bolts. These are actually the same bolts on a Cummins, uh, like a 12 valve 6BT Cummins. 
So instruct the installation for these is very important. It's very specific. You'll apply blue Loctite, medium strength thread locker, to the threads. That keeps the thread lubricated. That's going to help lock it in place so it doesn't vibrate out. And then under the heads, you're going to apply this assembly lube. So that helps reduce the friction so that we get a consistent amount of friction when we're torquing. Because the amount of friction, it's not that we want this to be as lubricated as possible. We just want a consistent amount of lubrication so that our torque values are consistent. If you use something else, it's going to give you a different coefficient of friction. You can actually under torque these or you could over torque these and snap them in half. So only use the supplied ARP ultra torque assembly lube. Again, you can use a driver. Do not put any torque to it, but you can use this just to finger tighten things to help expedite the installation procedure. So my Loctite bottle's been having kind of a temper tantrum with trying to ooze more out than I want to use. Don't need a ton on there. And you're not trying to put this assembly lube on the threads. That would be very counterproductive. Just want to spread it around the underside of the head. And this doesn't take much either. So I always throw this in a Ziploc bag and save, save it. So you can see how that should be under the head. So get all these in and then these are going to get torqued. And again the torque specs are in the PDF. I don't call out torque specs for adapter plates in my videos just in case I ever make any small revisions. I don't want to have to go back and completely edit and repost a video just for a number. But I'm going to torque this in at least two different steps because these get torqued pretty pretty high. So I'm not going to I'm not going to try to do it all at once. I want to keep keep things even. So my my tip and trick to lock the flywheel and the crankshaft so that we can torque it is you would get either a 46 millimeter or an inch and 13 sixteenths socket for the front retainer nut on the front of the crankshaft and take your half inch breaker bar. I've got my engine rotated vertically. You could have someone help you or you could just get a cheater bar so that your breaker bar bottoms out into the ground and then that'll prevent the crankshaft from spinning when you're trying to torque your flywheel bolts. All right, so at this point, our transmission adapter is installed. Got our pilot bearing in there. Got our flywheel on, torque to spec. And again, you'll just have to put your dowel pins in to keep the dust shield in place when you go to marry it up to the transmission. 